1994. I have two jewelry operations running, and I was doing about 35 trade shows a year. In Tucson, Arizona, we have a, a big, big show. It was the biggest show of the year. Every single year we did that show, there was always a lot of viruses running around. This year, a killer virus or bacterial. We didn't know what it was. People started getting sick, left and right. The medical officials didn't know what it was. By the third day of the show, I started to get sick so badly. And I was sweating, my throat was swollen like this. That night, I physically remember hearing myself take my last breath. I left my body through this beautiful fluorescent glowing mist. I have a feeling like I never had before. I remember saying, I'm home. I'm finally home. My name is Bill Tortorella. Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. My mom owned a uh, bar and grill across the street from Ebbets Field, where the Brooklyn Dodgers used to play. Quite amazing when I was a little boy growing up. I remember being at the pennant games with the Dodgers playing the Yankees, I think in 56 pennant. Mickey Mantle steps in. Going, going, a home run for the Yankees' great slugger. His third in this year's... That was amazing uh, life growing up when I was younger. I was an artist. I took commercial art and illustration. I graduated art and design in New York. I worked for Triad Studios and, and commercial art. We used to do work for Benton and Bowles, which was the biggest ad agency in New York City at the time. And that was going to be the field for the rest of my life, I thought. But uh, life changes. I moved down to Florida when I got married, 1973 now. My dad used to have stories about Miami, Miami Beach, conventions and the palm trees, the, the blue water, you know, and well, I'm thinking in my head, Miami's a big city. Well, Miami's a big city now, yes, but not 1973. 1973, the skyline of Miami had maybe four big buildings in it. And I come to find out there's no ad agencies. I can't find a job in my field. That's when I started to search for a new job. There was an ad in the Miami Herald that they needed emergency medical technicians. They needed them for the county because everybody was retiring to South Florida at the time. So they were really in dire need for help. They actually told me they would pay me to go to school and I would work on the units as an attendant alongside the two paramedics along the way. So I worked during the day and I went to school at night until I got my, you know, my badges, I call them. When you go into work every day for years and just pick up people that are broken up and having death in your hands every day, it eventually, it gets to your psyche inside I had this thing called PTSD. They told me I had needed some time. I had left being a paramedic. I happened to open a business up selling jewelry. This business fell into my hands practically. A friend of mine was a Teamsters driver. He drove trucks and they had these things called seconds, boxes of seconds, like where the the jewelry wasn't that badly. That week, it was a big flea market. I bought two four by eight foot tables and a pop-up tent. And in two days, I took in $2,800 off of something that cost me less than $200.
and I found a new career. Fast forward to 1994. I have two uh, jewelry operations running down in South Florida, one in Pompano Beach, one in Fort Lauderdale. And I was doing about 35 trade shows a year. And 1994, we have a, a big, big show. It's the biggest show of the year, actually. It was in Tucson, Arizona. Every single year we did that show, there was always a lot of viruses running around. This year, a killer virus or bacterial we didn't know what it was. It just came through. People started getting sick, left and right. The medical officials didn't know what it was. By the third day of the show, the lady across the booth from me, the lady just fell to the floor. And, you know, the paramedics came and everything, and I was still fine. I went over to see if she was okay. That night, I started to get sick so badly and I was sweating, my throat was swollen like this. They took a look at me and they said, Bill, you gotta get over to the hospital. And they hooked me up with intravenous IV. And after they brought my oxygen levels back up and they got a couple of bags with uh, antibiotic in them in me, they said, your oxygen level's good now. Um, you could actually go back to your hotel, but we want you to go directly to the hospital in the morning if you wake up and feel the same way. So I went back to the hotel room. That night, I physically remember hearing myself take my last breath. I left my body. through this beautiful fluorescent glowing mist hovering over my body, looking down upon myself. And when I recognized that body wasn't alive anymore, this beam came from behind me so bright, it lit up everything underneath me. And it drew me right into the gateway, this beautiful tunnel. The tunnel was made up of magnificent colors. And now I am starting to move. But I'm feeling this amazing feeling. I have a feeling like I never had before, a love. The love was so incredible that you actually become the love. Now you're in this light, you're part of this light, and I'm moving at what seems to me like the speed of light. No debris, no nothing, just light, beautiful colors whizzing by me, going through me. And this love is growing stronger and stronger. By the time I get to my destination, I remember distinctively saying, I'm home. I'm finally home. I remember hearing a soft voice speak to me. And she says, yes, Bill, you're home in the light of God. And then she says, my name is Antonia. I am one of your guardians. And now I'm being greeted by spirits all around me, family, friends. And I remember mingling, talking, feeling love from everybody. I recognize them, they recognize me. It's all, everything is done through telepathy. There's no mouths at this point. There's no bodies at this point. You're just, they are beams of light. I'm still a mist at this time. After a, it seemed like a few minutes have passed by and I hear this voice, hello, Billy. When I heard that voice, that was my brother's voice. My brother, Peter, he was about 16 years older than me. And my brother was around with me all the time while I was growing up, teaching me how to play ball and taking me to my, my ball games when I was in the baseball leagues and everything. He was just a wonderful, wonderful brother. And then it came out of nowhere. Uh, he wound up having liver cancer and they told him he was gonna have four or five months to live. And that 
that devastated me. Now, I'm sure I know my brother's voice. When he said, hello, Billy, by this time everybody was calling me Bill in life. I was in my 40s, but I was Billy to him. And he says, hello, Billy. And I turned around and said, Peter. And the embrace was almost unexplainable. It was like you were part of them, they were part of you. Then he explained to me that he has to take me now and that we were going for something. And I said, what? Well, he says, we're going for your life review. I didn't know what that was, but this is now the first sense I have again of my life back on earth. When I spoke to him, I forgot for a while. And he took me to another level, which they started this amazing, amazing thing. They showed me all the good I've done in my life. They showed me all the wrong I have ever done in my life. Luckily, thank God, I always say thank God, I never really felt like I really did anything really, really bad. But I didn't know the hurt I caused some people. But you get to feel that pain. You get to feel that hurt that you put on to others. You become the physical pain. And I was, I was physically crying in my spirit, but no, no body. But it's like I felt the tears. It mounted, it mounted, it mounted so bad. I said, I can't take it anymore. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And all of a sudden, a light, light came in and said, now we'll show you the good side. Thank God I did a lot of good in my life, especially with that job. Years as the paramedic, doing all that, trying to save people's lives and, and bring them back and, and help them in every possible way I could. That's when I understood what we're here for. I understood that we're here for service, to help one, and other. We're all connected. Until that time, I was a business person. I didn't think nothing in my head but business. I was gonna come home from the show and I had an appointment to go to QVC and you know, that was my life. I didn't, I didn't have those kind of thoughts in my life prior. And then Peter said to me, your third guardian is coming and this man of great age, wisdom. When he approached me, I knew him my whole life. He was that voice that always spoke to me in my ear. He was the intuition that kept me out of trouble like a lot of my friends were getting in. I would always hear these things, it's not the right thing, you know. You say that in your own mind, but that's your intuition. But he came to us and we were standing there. And I remember Antonia there and Antonia so I said, look at yourself, Bill. And I remember looking down at myself and I changed into this magnificent being. Now I was like the other spirits. I was this beautiful beam. Now we're back in spirit, so I'm just feeling that, that complete love again. In your spirit side, you're always in love, where you're connected to everyone around you. And they take me to a final level. All three of them take me to a final level, where I believe it's almost like a panel. They take me up in front of these magnificent, beautiful, beautiful angels all around. And I remember they explained to me that you were going to get wisdom and knowledge through these angels. I started getting bombarded with different thoughts. Angels would approach me and I would see the universe. Angels would approach me, I would see combustion. Nebulas being created. I would understand that we all come from stardust and somehow, some form, another angel approached me. Crystal numbers floating down in lines and numbers with light. All these numbers were, were lighting for me. I couldn't understand the three, 
The nines would light over and over and over again. The six would light. These particular numbers, the one, the eight, the three, the six, the nine, they lit up brilliant. And they explained it to me as if those numbers, they mean everything. If we didn't have these numbers, we wouldn't have our tides. They explain on earth, we wouldn't have seasons. We would not be here if it wasn't for these numbers. One more angel approaches me, says to me, you must return. I'm feeling complete love. I said, no, no, please don't send me back. I was pleading, pleading over and over again. She says again, you must return. I did everything I possibly could think of not to have to come back. The next thing I know, I'm being pulled back through a vortex, flowing back faster and faster and faster. And then I'm starting to feel pain and then I'm zapped in my body. When I came back in my body, I'm physically feeling pain and I can't move my legs or my arms. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. At least 10 minutes went by and then I started feeling tingles running through my body, running through my arms, running through my legs. And then I had enough strength to reach over and I reached up, got the phone and I said, get me to the hospital. I was frightened. I was in full of pain. I couldn't tell anybody this because if I would have opened my mouth, they would have thought I was crazy. In those days, you just didn't talk about that. Never heard of a near-death experience, didn't know what it was. And it wasn't to the point till I saw my doctor after I got home. He took me to his office and I explained what happened to me. And he told me, I think what you had was a near-death experience. And he gave me a few things to read. He said, you should read these and you'll have a little better understanding. But he did say one thing to me after that. He said, Bill Tortorella, a lot of us get to find God in our lifetime. He said, Bill, you were lucky enough to meet him. I have no fear whatsoever in dying after my near-death experience. I welcome it someday. And it's my home. I'm going home. You know, I know where I live. I know where I'm going back to. I know that this is just a temporary thing, but this is where we learn. You see, that's an important part as well. We learn. We learn how to feel here. And that's something we don't have on the other side. The only feeling we have on the other side is of one complete love and service. It's one whole feeling. Those are together as one. But that's it. There's no pain on the other side. There's no sadness. There's no sorrow. None of those human emotions exist. That's why there's no selfishness. There's no... There's nothing on the other side like that. That love and service that you feel on the other side overwhelms anything that you could think of here by boundaries, by hundreds and hundreds of times more wonderful. This is a temporary abode. We're in this casing here, but this is not us. We're beautiful beams of light. We're spirits of the universe. And when we all get there someday again, you'll recognize it too. You'll recognize it as home. You'll have family and friends around you that you'll recognize. We all travel in spirit circles around our friends and family. They stay with us. Antonia was responsible for bringing me in and she was the spirit responsible for bringing me out. Peter was the angel I had when I called on God to help me. He was always around to help me. And Oren was always with me if I was thinking I'm gonna be doing something wrong. All I could tell you is I met these beings that were wonderful, beams of light. 
with nothing but knowledge and wisdom radiating out of them. But when you're there, you are home. This is not our home. We live forever. Nothing gets old. Everything is new all the time. The love builds within so strong that <sighs> it's almost if you were on an addictive euphoria of some kind of drug, I would say, here, that you could possibly explain it in any form, any way. But that's the feeling of it. Our purpose is love. When we're babies, we are love. We're still contacted by the other side. We have to be able to learn how to feel that love again. It's hard. We live in a world that's very tough now. Things are moving too quick. Things move too fast. We have to slow down in a way. The love and the service is probably the most important things to learn here on this side and to transfer that to others. Coming back, I knew the best work I've ever done in my life was when I was a paramedic and, you know, did all that service on a daily basis for people. I never knew how important that was. I never helped people as much as I did until after the near-death experience. I would help others. I would do anything. If I seen someone struggling in the street, I'd go run and help them. I'd say, this person needs something. You give as much as you can, you know, you do as much as you can. And to give you yourself is not to get back. It's to, it's to give. That's the fortune of love that you receive. That's the gift that we all get from God.